guys, welcome back to room 237, back with another uh, random first time watch blind uh, Hulu review. And this is one that, another one that I knew nothing about, I never even saw a trailer, I only knew the synopsis that was on Hulu, so I didn't know anything about this film. And it, it premiered in 2020, but it was officially released through Magnet in 2021, I'm just going to put 2021, and that's the film Held. Now, I noticed that this had familiar directors. It, it's a, a duo. Uh, Travis Clough and Chris Loffing. And I thought that sounded familiar, so I looked. And, well, first, by the end of this film, I thought that was, that was actually pretty good. That was decent. It got kind of generic towards the end. Uh, I guess the twist, if you want to call it a twist, or the reveal, may not be the most original thing in the world, but I thought it was clever, especially for the kind of social commentary that they're going for. Uh, but yeah, as immediately after that, it kind of gets generic, but it's still a decent ending. So I thought this was a pretty well-made film, and I looked, and this is the third film from Clough and Laughing. And when I looked to see what their first two were, I had all the more respect for this film. Because the other two that they wrote and directed was The Gallows and The Gallows 2. One of the worst found footage films I've ever seen with some of the worst characters. Two was even worse with it even more forgettable. <laughs> I just remember it being worse. And so at first I was like, wow, these guys came a long way since those two. But then I saw they didn't write this film. So their directing skills did get better. But this was actually written by Jill Aubrey, who also plays our lead, Emma. Now, this, well, before I get into that, the rest of the cast, even it's very small. We got Bart Johnson as her husband, Henry. They're the Barretts. Uh, Zach Gold plays Ryan Sullivan, and Rez Kempton has a brief appearance as the rideshare driver, Joe. But also, Travis Clough appears as uh, the voice. He's credited as the voice, who's our villain. And I was thinking, he kind of looks like a young James Woods. Not near as good as an actor, even though I think he did fine for this role. But... Basically, this movie is, it's kind of like if you take something like Would You Rather and Saw and then take like the, well, I can't really get into that because then that will give the reveal. So I'll save that for spoilers, but initially throughout the bulk of the film, it is kind of like a Would You Rather or Saw, not nearly that graphic or violent because basically, uh, uh, Emma and Henry, they have uh, a failing marriage. They've been married for, I think they said, nine years. So they rent this cabin or this, you know, very luxurious place out in the country. And they notice that their drink is drugged. They fall asleep. And when they wake up the next day, not only are is their anniversary stuff out for them, clothes laid out for them she has like a wedding uh, nightgown on but there's this sort of jigsaw type voice going throughout the house and they're told that every move they make is being watched everything they say is being recorded or can be heard excuse me and they notice there's like this little implant behind their ear that if they disobey they will get this intense shock so the voice tells them, you know, preaches about marriage and the union and, you know, through the truth will you save your marriage and all that stuff. And at first it just commands them to do stuff like, you know, uh, open the door for your wife, cook for your husband, uh, tells him to uh, open a file on the laptop. And of course, they still don't really know what's going on, but eventually 
you know, he finds out there's proof on this laptop that she's having an affair. And it does get to some darker places. Like the voice makes him, makes them say, I love you and look at each other and kiss and you know, strip the other person. <clears throat> Eventually try, the voice tells him to make love to her. And this is immediately after video footage of, of her cheating on him. So yeah, the voice makes them do literally every move. And if they disobey, try to go outside, or try to fuck with the cameras, or try to look around, then they'll get a shock. And so yeah, I mean, it kind of has that torture porn kind of feel to it. it. It doesn't get near as bloody or graphic. I mean, they don't really have to do anything violent to each other. It's basically... They're, they're kind of playing house, essentially. He's just having them act as this perfect couple. <clears throat> but eventually, <clears throat> um, you know, and every time there's help, like the rideshare driver shows up. And, of course, the when we do see the voice, it's a guy in all black. He's wearing this black mask that looks like a Greek or... Roman statue and pretty much makes it so no one can get help but I will say uh, Jill Aubrey I thought it was well written uh, I'm not sure what else uh, I'm not sure what else she's written <clears throat> I know I haven't seen anything else that she's been in but I think she also did a, a fine job acting uh, yeah, I haven't seen anything else she's acted in, but she's also been a producer. Oh, she's acted in pretty much everything she's written, but she also directed All We Have Left, Abby Undone, and See You Then. Those are the ones she's directed. Uh, I thought this was a, a strong character. I thought this was a smart character, and, you know... It, it shows that she does have some trauma. This opens up with some teenagers in a car. Two guys and a girl. A, a, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, this one other guy. And it implies that they're both going to rape her in, in the backseat of this car. And I was wondering when that was going to factor in. Well, and it's not really a spoiler, but it is a reveal as you go on that that was her. And she's kind of struggled with this trauma. Which ties into when the voice is telling him, Henry, to make love to her. And she, she freezes. You see her like grab the blanket, but she can't move. They talk about that and she says that she froze. She just has this intense fear now when, you know, something like that happens. And she does overcome that, and I do think she does make some smart decisions in this. Uh, she is a strong character. Which, I mean, <laughs> without giving away the reveal, I will say the kind of social commentary this is going for, this is how you do it on the nose, but so you know what they're saying, but... Subtle enough so it's not beating you in the head with it. I mean, I think this is... Uh, Black Christmas 2019 wishes it could be this clever. Because it does kind of tackle that kind of... Uh, issue. This is much I'll say before I get to spoilers. But, uh... Yeah, this movie kept me guessing as to who the voice is and who's putting them up to it. Uh, because it's not a random person, uh, I will say that. It, it plays out kind of like a mystery, but it, it's not like Henry and Emma are trying to figure out who's doing it to them. In fact, for the most part, they're just kind of going along with it. But uh, um, I thought this was well-directed, especially considering that these two did the gallows and the gallows too. This is miles, miles, just fucking miles better than both of those. 
writing wise, even though they did write it, uh, I thought Jill Aubrey's writing was uh, thought provoking, clever, uh, kind of eerie and, and creepy in its own way. The the uh, reveal actually like with how clever it is, how smart it is with the social commentary, it kind of reminded me of Get Out. Uh, it doesn't tackle that same issue, but just some aspects of Get Out that just kind of make you go, oh, the, that's well done. You know, it, uh, not to the extreme of Get Out, but it kind of reminded me of it. And yeah, I thought this was a solid movie. Uh, again, uh, I would say the most generic part of it would have been the ending after the reveal but even then you have this strong character and the suspense and seeing how she's gonna you know what the outcome is gonna be so it's on hulu i can recommend it uh <clears throat> don't don't go into it thinking like because there's like this jigsaw deep type voice people held captive don't think you're gonna get something as tortury as Saw or Would You Rather or or anything like that, because they don't torture people. I mean, the worst we get is eventually, uh, the young man that Emma's been cheating on uh, Henry with is brought in, taped to a chair, and Emma is made to stab him. Henry's thing is going off and she's given the choice. Either Henry dies by that or you stab this guy, Ryan. And she stabs Ryan. Uh, oh, there was something else I was going to say while I was giving that thought. Oh, it does have some good uh, build-up moments and kind of not really misdirects, but... The, so well written moments where it kind of sweeps the rug from under you, like when it's revealed that there is an affair. She's cutting up vegetables to cook. He's at the laptop, and we see him open up a file of text screenshots. The voice tells him to read them out loud. And of course, it's this these texts saying, "I love you, I miss you, I, I want to do all these things to you," and the way both actors look. You almost think it's like he he's revealing his affair to her under pressure, which is what I thought it was going to be. But then quickly it switches to him finding out about her affair. So there are some, there's actually a few moments like that where it's it's building up and you think it's going to go one way, but then it it's, sweeps it from under you and goes a different way that you might not be expecting. So... Well written, smart. You do have a character that you care about, this Emma, and I think she is a a smart, strong character that does have a good arc and is able to overcome quite a bit. She goes through a lot, and again, I really liked the the uh, reveal of who's behind all this. Again, not maybe not the most original concept, but the way they approach it. I think is fairly original and kind of clever, especially when you consider the social commentary in it. But yeah, it's on Hulu. I, I highly recommend it. Uh, it's not a great movie. It's not, you know, one of the best I've seen. It's not one of the best of 2021, but it's definitely worth your time. So with that, I'm going to get to spoilers. So at one point, uh, Emma realizes as she's been given another drink of whiskey, she thinks back to the first night she had whiskey and then another time where the voice in the mask came in and gave her a shot. It was still that drugged whiskey in the syringe. So we see her pretending to drink it, then dump it out and then pretend to be passed out. Voice comes in to check on her, leaves, and then we see her kind of wandering around trying to figure out what to do and she finds this closet with this hidden room that while the rest of the house looks kind of modern and luxurious 
This hidden room is very retro. It's very 70s. I mean, it kind of... This very retro TV, shag carpeting, very golden furniture and walls and everything. I, I really like the look of it. That that set design specifically I, I thought was well done. And not only does she see this giant Scarface T monitor with all the screens of the rooms, but she hits this thing that turns on this old uh, television that has this ad where we see Travis Clough as the voice, but now he doesn't have the voice. It's his own voice. And it's an ad for this sort of private sort of of organization of seemingly rich people. I, I wanted to say in the beginning of the review, kind of like hostile. But I figured if I said hostile minus the torture, it, it might have given too much away. But it's basically, he, he runs this group called the Eden Group or the Eden Club, uh, I think it's group, where he off, it, it's made up of these men and he offers these services to married men where they they have a bad marriage or if if there's an infidelity which i don't think henry knew about the infidelity i think that just came well no he did because eventually he brings it up he was like uh, you said i got to do it but if you feel like your marriage is slipping or you're losing control of your wife or there's infidelity you bring her to this house, they put you in this kind of scenario, and then there's this traumatic event, like when Emma had to kill Ryan, that is then filmed and then given to the husband to hold over her so that he gains control over the marriage again, control over his wife again, and brings their marriage back up to code or back up. To, I'm guessing the reason why it has this 70s decor is kind of like uh, old traditions, the kind of about how things used to be, uh, old-fashioned, I guess, but to like the nth uh, degree. Social commentary about you know, kind of the toxic masculinity or women bowing down to men or, you know, men being in control of women this handled it so much better than black christmas 2019 it's on the nose enough to know what they're saying and i mean yeah it's very obvious it is blood but it's just subtle enough that it doesn't feel like it's kicking you in the balls with it in fact when they're given <laughs> in the ad there's these testimonies from other families that have done it and the husband is like, well, uh, uh, after two years, my wife just let herself go. But after a weekend here, it, it, she's the wife that I've always deserved and more. And then there's another couple that kind of gives the same thing. But all these testimonies, the, the husband is happy and the wife just looks terrified. <laughs> and there is like this ominous score in the background, not in the commercial, but in like the film. And it really builds on the horror that this is a private kind of service or society. For and I just it's very eerie, you know. I I do find the secret organizations kind of creepy. I thought that was the scariest part of Hostel too, to be honest. So yeah, maybe not the most original idea. You know, there's this secret organization that you could call upon to help you out for something evil and but this one particular customer is smart enough to overcome it and so yeah uh emma is able to find her car keys uh she goes back to pretending to be passed out henry puts her in the car but uh Oh, because all the car keys are labeled, so she, like, switched them so it looked like their keys were still there. So when the voice and Henry go back in the house to get the correct keys, 
She realizes she has to cut the implant out, so she does with the car keys. I don't think that's possible. And then instead of driving off, uh, the voice just reaches in, grabs her, and they fight. And then they run off into the orchard behind them. And, and she does lay kind of, kind of a, a trap. because There is some good foreshadowing in here, too. Because there is a scene with the crawl space when we're still... Back when we don't know Henry is in on it. She spills some wine and she thinks it goes under a crawl space. That's very early in the film. Or when this is first started happening, Henry's outside, then he runs in, he's all bloody, saying he got jumped and forced back inside. But when she's looking at the footage, she sees he had fake blood and faked it. It was he was in on it from the beginning. Yeah, he hired this guy and he's gonna use Ryan's murder to hold over her head forever and gain control of his marriage. Because the way Ryan's death is filmed, it, it's like while he's being zapped, he's off camera, and I guess it's going to be edited as such, so it just looks like she kills him. But she runs into the orchard, the voice follows her, she, she gets some of that fake blood, leaves a trail, and by this time the voice starts talking about like, you know, Wives bow down to their husbands, as Eve did to Adam in Eden. She hits him with a shovel. He lands on a thing, cracks his skull. She does take his sort of uh, touch watch or whatever it is, where he controls the shocky things. But then Henry finds her, and she still plays it off like, Oh, I woke up in the car. I don't know what happened. But then he notices some blood on her shirt, probably from this. They go back in the house to get their stuff. And then we have the confrontation. Uh, she kind of reveals to him through an action that he retaliates. They fight. They chase. And then this is where it gets generic. You know, finding out the husband's in on it. Chases her down. Kind of because... I, I don't really want to say The Shining, but... You know, she... It fucks him up a little bit. Hit him in the head a few times with the whiskey bottle. Uh, it, it does make it back to the room where there's that gun that shoots the implants. Manages to shoot one into him. Turns the thing on and just cranks it. Which first, because he does manage to stab her in the leg. He's like stepping on it and she's trying to get the watch out of her pocket. And she makes him back off by saying, like, I belong to you. I belong to you. I, I love you. But then she fires it. He falls. And then she turns it all the way up. Then drops it in the glass of whiskey and leaves. And then it, it just ends with her in the car leaving. She sees that the rideshare guy, Joe, is in a wrecked car on the side of the road. Because he comes to... You know, drop something off, and then we see that the voice attacks him through security cameras, but he lived. So she puts him in the car and takes him to the hospital, and you know, this tells him he can call her Emma. So yeah, I, I thought this movie was well written. Uh, it had some good foreshadowing moments, good moments of build up, and then uh, flipping your expectations. I thought it had a good reveal. I kept thinking throughout, I was like, is it Joe? Is it possibly Joe? Then I started thinking, oh, it's got to be Ryan. Maybe, he, because in the very beginning, she's ignoring Ryan's calls. So they like, maybe Ryan's getting pissed that she chose her husband over him. Maybe he's doing it. But then Ryan gets killed. And so I was stumped on who it could be. I did not see this s secret society thing coming. But I like that idea. I, I liked how it tackled that kind of social commentary. Especially since I would say that's one of the most beaten to death uh, topics in social commentary. Especially in horror films. But I thought this was a clever way it handled it. And then yeah, when it's the husband chasing the wife might get a little bit generic. But you know, I, uh, I thought the rest was pretty damn well made. Again, uh, even down to the directing. 
considering these guys did Gallows 1 and 2, they come a long way. I thought this was a well-made film. There's not a whole lot about it on, on the internet, uh, so I'm finding a lot more, uh, more than I thought. Like, almost straight to Hulu movies are actually pretty damn good. There was another one I watched last night that I had to review, uh, uh, The Evil in Us, one of the most original zombie movies I've seen in a while, uh, along with uh, uh, The Cured. So yeah, held, cut, different way to take home invasion, uh, I should have said that in the beginning, but you know, it, it, you can definitely tell it's reminiscent of some things, but it does it in its own way. And uh, I would say acting and the writing are the two strongest points of this film. But that is 2021's Held, and uh, thank you for watching. Oh!